Alright, hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today what I got in store is I just pulled aside a bunch of random cards from my Magic the Gathering collection. They're just some cards that I think are fun, they're a little bit wacky, they have some cool abilities, and I just wanted to put together a video sharing some fun, cool, wacky cards from one of my favorite games of all time, Magic the Gathering. Um... Yeah, so let's just kind of get on into it. I do have some of these still in sleeves and stuff just because they came in some decks and stuff I have. So just to make it a little bit easier on myself, I kept them in the sleeves so I know where they go. Uh, right off the bat, I have this card right here. This is actually a German Drudge Skellingtons. Uh, the text for it is printed on the basic swamp uh, land. I've actually done a complete video on this. It's more of a misprint, but I just think it's a fun, wacky card. I mean, come on, it's like a swamp that says uh, you can regenerate it. Of course, it is in German. Uh, but yeah, just very interesting. It's Drudge Skeletons printed on a swamp, and I thought it deserved a little spotlight here. The next card I got, I got Sundial and the Infinite. I think I actually opened this up on this channel. I'm pretty sure. It's a really interesting artifact. It has a powerful ability. It's two mana, one tap, uh, end the turn activate this ability only during your turn so exile all spells and abilities on the stack discard down to your maximum hand size damage uh, wears off and uh, this turn and unto, until end of turn effects end so it's very interesting it's powerful ability you can just end the turn crazy so if uh, if your opponent's gonna do something or something I don't know just end it so nothing else the turn is over very strange I'm sure you could do something like that uh, I don't know many cards that do something like that Next card I got has got Apocalypse Chime. This is actually, they have a couple versions of this, obviously for each expansion, but they used to come out with the cards that would just kill all the other cards from that expansion. That's what this is, Apocalypse Chimes, two mana, it's an artifact, two tap, sacrifice Apocalypse Chime to bury all cards from the Homelands expansion. So imagine playing like Draft or something like that for Homelands, you get this on the battlefield, pretty much clear the whole field because it's probably all Homelands cards. But very cool, just interesting kind of wacky card, kills only the cards that uh, was included in the set that this card came from, so Homelands. Very cool, interesting art as well. Next card I got, I got Brush Wag. Um, just because it's a strange creature type, look at it. It makes me think of like uh, some sort of anime movie or something like that. It's like a, a hedgehog ball, almost like a rolling kind of tumbleweed, but it has like a creepy looking ghostly face on it. Very interesting, almost like a meme. Brush Wagga, one and two green, so on Brush Wagga. If it blocks, or is blocked, it gets a uh, negative 2 plus 2 until it turns, so it gets more power. But really, it's just because this is a wacky card. I mean, what is this? A brush wag? Very cool. But yeah, very cool. One off card. Next one I have here. This is a very interesting card. Cumulative Upkeep is a strange sort of thing. I don't really know if they have that anymore in the game. I don't know if they've printed any new cards with it. Uh, because it's cumulative, it keeps if it's one the first turn, the next turn it's two, the next turn it's three, and so on and so forth. It just keeps building. And this one's interesting. It's psychic vortex two and two blue. The cumulative upkeep usually it's a negative thing. This one it's draw a card. So the first turn you draw a card, second card draw two, third card, so on and so forth. And at the end of each of your turns, sacrifice a land and discard your hand. So it's a super steep cost for the end of your turn, but very interesting. So each turn you're gonna be keep drawing cards, but at the end of the turn you gotta discard your hand and sacrifice land so very cool wacky card cool looking third eyeball very cool next card i got i got reality twist again this is a very wacky one as well uh this one's from ice age three generic blue mana almost like a checkerboard and all the pieces are warped and the characters are falling off really cool art by james ernest and this one has a cumulative upkeep of one and two blue so pretty expensive but it, it really just completely changes the board around. Instead of their normal manas, plains produce red, swamps produce green, mountains produce white, and forests produce black. So pretty much it changes what mana makes. <laughs> if you have a swamp on the field, now your swamp produces a forest. So pretty much it just it completely turns the board around, pretty much making uh, all the mana could be useless. But very cool, very fun card. Next card I got, I got Withering Boon. Oh, I forgot to grab the other version of this. I have one called Dash Hopes. It's a, it's like a black counter spell and that someone pays five life. And I thought it, I thought that deserved to be in here, but I actually forgot it. But this is another one, Withering Boon. One in a black. It's an interrupt. So back when instants were interrupts from Mirage. Pay three life. Counter target summon spell. Very cool. I don't know... Um, yeah, it's just like, uh, I don't know if there's many black counter spells other than this in Dash Hopes. Very strange. It's a black instant that you can counter a creature spell if you pay three life and one in a black mana. Very cool. Next card I got, I got the Ley Line of uh, Sanctity. But honestly, it's pretty much the, all the Ley Lines. They just have a very strange ability where if they're in your opening hand when you start the game, 
You can begin it, the game with this on the battlefield. So if Leyland Sanctity is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. So there's like so many versions of these. I don't even know, like five, ten of these sort of ley lines. And if they're in your opening hand, you can start the game with it on the battlefield. So that's just a cool, kind of fun, wacky ability. This one in particular just gives you hexproof. Next card I got, I got a Mind Break Trap. The trap cards are pretty cool. I think from uh, original World Wake or Zendikar. I can't really remember. I think that's a World Wake. Not 100% sure. 2-2 two two blue. Instant Trap. If an opponent casts 3 or more spells this turn, you may pay 0 rather than play Mind Breaks of Traps and Mana Cost. So if your opponent played 3 more spells, you can play this for free, which is really cool. All the trap cards have some sort of, uh, once they have a criteria that's been met, the casting cost for the spell is down to 0. So it's really cool. And it says, Excel any number of target spells. So if your opponent is going off and they, they have a storm count of 100, you play this. Just counter them all. How how fun would that be? Just a really cool, fun, wacky card. Next card I got, another one, is uh, Bridge from Below. Great for Dredge or anything like that. Graveyard Heavy Decks. It's a very strange card. Three black man, it's an enchantment, but most of the times, you don't want to actually play it on the field. You want this in your graveyard. And it says, whenever a non-token creature is put in your graveyard from the battlefield, if Bridge from Below is in your graveyard, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. So if it's in your graveyard, and... Uh, a non-token creature control uh, dies and is put in your graveyard, you can create a 2-2 zombie. Whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, if bridge from below is in your graveyard, exile bridge from below. So pretty much if this is in your graveyard, if one of your creature dies, it goes to your graveyard, you create a 2-2 zombie as long as it wasn't a token. And if a, one of your opponent's creature dies and goes in their graveyard, you have to exile these. So just a very wacky card. It's pretty much only useful when it's in your graveyard. Very strange. Next card I got, I got a uh, Shield Sphere. I just thought this deserved a place in here just because it's a very strange card. It's a 0-6 wall artifact. Uh, that's uh, zero cost. Zero cost, zero six. Very powerful. If Shield Sphere is assigned to block, as a blocker, put a let's get to focus, uh, negative zero, negative one counter on it. So it can only block five times, or I guess, yeah, six times, but it would die. The, you know. But very interesting card, zero cost. Artifact, a 0-6 wall. Next card I got, I got Thief of Sanity. This is more of a recent one, but I really just enjoy this card. I think it's super wacky and crazy. One, a blue and a black. It's a flying specter. It's a 2-2 two -two creature. Whenever Thief of Sanity deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of that player's library. Exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the graveyard. Uh, in their, into their graveyard for as long as the card remains exiled. You may look at it, you may cast it, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color of any type to cast that spell. So pretty much you attack with it, you look at the top three cards of your opponent's library, you pick out your favorite looking card in there, and you pretty much exile it, and you can play that card. So pretty much you can use this, you can attack with it, if it's unblocked, you get damage through, you get to pretty much play one of your opponent's cards in their in their uh, deck. Unless it's three lands, then you just put them back. But uh, very cool, you can pretty much play your opponent's cards. The next one I have, this is actually from the deck, these two were in decks together. Uh, Chaos Wand. This is one of my favorite cards. It's just so wacky and so much fun. It looks like some sort of wand. Just full of chaos and lightning and fire. And it's an artifact from M19. It has four tap. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card. You may cast the card without paying its mana cost. Then put the actual cards that weren't cast this way in the bottom of that library in a random order. So pretty much, you have this on the battlefield. Pay four tap. You go to your opponent, you say, okay, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery. And then once you exile one of those, show it, or, well, once you exile one of those, um, I get to play it for free. So if you do it to your opponent, they have a red deck and they're going, they're exiling cards and they see a lightning bolt, you pretty much just lightning bolted them. Uh, very cool card. It just takes your opponent's deck and lets you able to... Uh, just play with it, mess with it, but it really depends on what cards are in your opponent's deck, so that's why it's not super powerful. It's just like a wacky kind of chaos card, and obviously it has chaos in the name. Very cool. Next card I got, I got the card Leveler. It's a 5 mana 10-10. That's amazing, but where's the downfall? Let's check it out. When Leveler comes into play, remove your library from the game. Strange card. Very strange card. A 5 mana 10-10, but obviously if you played this game before... If you have no cards in your library and you go to draw and you can't draw anything, you lose the game. So pretty much it it makes it so you're going to lose the game next turn unless you can do something with your library. But very interesting. 5 mana, 10-10. The leveler. 
And the next one, this was kind of in the same collection, Laboratory Maniac. I thought there was always something you could do with these two cards together. I'm sure there is if I sat down and really thought about it. But yeah, two and a blue. It's a creature human wizard. It's a 2-2, two, two, but this is it. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. So pretty much it takes the rule that if you draw a card and you can't draw, you lose. And it turns it to if you draw a card and you can't draw, you win. So it kind of changes around uh, a way that you can win the game. Very cool kind of effect. And I c you can kind of see how maybe these could work together. Because when this comes into play, remove your library. If you can't draw from your library, you win the game. So kind of feel like they... They belong together. But a very wacky card right there. Next card I got, uh, just a random one going through my collection. 4 and 2 black. Hex. Destroy 6 target creatures. It's just a weird card. Uh, the specific number is 6. You have to destroy 6 creatures. Very weird. Uh, but I'm in 1 mana for each creature. But I guess if your opponent has a field full of creatures. Or they happen to have just 6 creatures or something like that. Go ahead and use it. Destroy all 6 of them. When killing 5 just isn't enough. Very strange. This is a strange card. Next one I got, uh, Deranged Tournament. I really like this card. Three and two green. It's a summon elf with echo. So, uh, your next upkeep, you gotta pay its mana cost again. It's a one one creature, but, uh, when it comes into play, you put four squirrel tokens. You put four squirrel tokens into play. So he comes into play with four squirrels and gives all squirrels plus one plus one. Super powerful card, but honestly, I just have it in here just because it is a wacky card. Look at this guy. He's hanging out in the forest. Covered in like crazy gray hair uh, with squirrels all over him. He is the squirrel wrangler, the squirrel hermit. Very strange, fun, flavorful card right there. There's so much uh, actual game text on there. I'm sure if this card had player text or flavor text, this would probably be my favorite flavorful card, possibly. But yeah, since there's so much abilities, there's no room for flavor text. But very cool card right here. I just have it in here just because, I mean, it makes squirrels. And there's this guy in the forest hanging out with the squirrels. Next card I got, I got Peldegriff. Uh, very wacky card if you've never seen this before. I don't even know what the abilities do, but we'll find out together. I just know that it could, I don't know, maybe gives it flying or something like that. But really, I have this in here. Just look at the art of that thing. It's a purple hippopotamus with green wings. Yeah, that's enough. One, a white, a blue, and a green. It's a summon legend. It's a 4-4 by Amy Weber. Very cool art from Alliances. What You pay white, flying until end of turn. Target opponent gains two life. You pay blue, return it to its owner's hand. Target opponent may draw a card. You pay green, trample till end of turn. Put a hippo token into play under opponent's control. Treat this as a 1-1 green creature. Very interesting. So he can kind of give himself more powers. You can save him, give him flying or trample. But your opponent gets, honestly, maybe more benefits. It's a 4-4 with flying, 4-4 uh, that you can save, or 4-4 with trample. But your opponent gets either a 1-1, one, one, they can either draw a card, and they gain 2 life. I mean, honestly, either way, your opponent probably does pretty well too. But really cool card, just love the art on it by Amy Weber. Purple Hippopotamus with green wings. Next card I got, I got Slaughter Pack. I included this in here just because it's a strange card, as it has 0 mana cost. It's an instant. Slaughter Pack is black, it lets you know it still has a card color, even though there's no cost. Destroy target non-black creature. That's what it does, it's a destroying a creature, and it says... At the beginning of your next upkeep, pay two and a black. If you don't, you lose the game. So it's a very strange card as in if you play it, you have to pay two and a black at the beginning of your upkeep. And if you don't, you lose the game. So this game can make you lose if you can't play the man or something. Like that. Just very strange sort of alternate cost cards. I know they have a couple other colors. I think they have a green one where you can like search for a creature. They have a blue one which is like a countering a spell, possibly. I don't really remember. But um, yeah, this whole cycle from like New Pyrexia, they do have a bunch of zero-cost cards that if you don't pay the cost of the next uh, upkeep, you lose the game. Just very weird kind of card. And the last card I got to just check out this fun, wacky little uh, assortment of cards is Dryad Arbor. This is a cool card. It's a green creature. Uh, land. It's a land creature. I don't know if there's any other of these really in the game. Its arbor is green. It has no mana cost. Uh, it isn't a spell... It's affected by Summon Sickness and has tapped to add green to mana, puck, uh, mana pool. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one legendary creature, uh, no, land creature, Forest Dryad. So you can play this as your land, but it's also a 1-1 one, one creature. Very wild, very wild stuff. And this is from like a future site when they had those kind of crazy border cards right here. But yeah, just very interesting. This is if you have a deck and you can't decide if you want a creature or a land in it, go ahead and just get the uh, Dryad Arbor and you can have both. 
yeah. Anyway, it's just a fun little collection of cards. I just wanted to kind of go out and show uh, you all. Um, yeah, just some fun, wacky interaction that you can have with this game. I'm sure there's a whole lot more. Maybe I'll make another video like this in the future. Just a lot of fun to going through my collection, having some fun, and uh, sharing some fun, wacky cards with you all. Anyways, I hope you're all doing wonderful. hope you're all staying safe. I just want to say keep on keeping on, stay positive, and I'll catch you all in the next one.